If you're not gonna, if you're not going to pay attention, you're not gonna listen. You have my permission to leave. Okay, I won't get you in trouble. All right. I just want people in here that are going to pay attention and uh, do what I ask you to do. So if you're not going to, it would make it a lot easier for me and it would make it a lot easier for everybody else in here that wants to actually pay attention to actually pay attention. So you have my permission. I'm saying it. I'm recording it right now on YouTube. You can go back and listen. If you want to leave, all right, and you don't want to be in here and you don't think you need this review, you have my permission to leave. but. We're still taking the test on Thursday. You should really watch the video from yesterday. Yesterday I said, because um, I had told you the other day, forget what day it was, that if you don't show up and uh, take the test on Thursday, I was gonna give you a 50%. I've changed my mind since then, okay? If you don't show up for the test, okay, just like a teacher should, okay, because of 50%, that was just my the goodness of my heart that I was gonna give you a 50 if you do not show up on for the test on Thursday, you're going to get a zero for the test. Everybody understand that? That's that's what every other teacher would do, all right? If you don't show up and you were supposed to take it, then you get a zero because you didn't do anything. You have no reason to get a 50 if you don't show up and take the test. I thought about it. And I thought that that's too much, all right? I've told you for a couple weeks now that we we're going to work all the way to the very last day, all right? Again, I'm sticking to it. So, let's do this review. Yes. Okay. All right, so I will give you some problems. Some of these problems that have two of them on the test, I will probably only give you one because I got to fit a lot of stuff on the test. Hope you're listening. So, I just said I will give, if there's a problem with, like this right here, it's the same kind of problem, but there's two of them, I'll just give you one of them. I'm not saying which one. My guess would be I'd probably give you the one that's maybe a little bit harder, okay? Neither one of these is difficult, but there you go. All year long, there's always been 20 questions, every single test we've taken. Same with this one, there'll be 20 questions. All right, here we go. So, uh, it says classify as monomial binomial trinomial. I'll give you one of those, it's very easy, you don't have to do any math. You just got to say which one. So we're going to do all of these because you don't know which one's going to be on the test. So we're going to do all of these. This is just one term. Even though there's three things in here, it's still one term because a term is separated by a plus and a minus. So it's one term. So what is one term out of these three? It's a monomial. All right, so that's a monomial. All right, and how many terms here? Three. There's one, there's two, there's three. They're all being separated by either, oops, they're all being separated by either a plus or a minus, all right? Three terms, so obviously that's what? Trinomial, so everybody should get number one right on the test, all right? Again, there's just one of these. I won't put two of them on there. And they could be different numbers, okay? I'm not saying they're the exact numbers that are on this quiz, all right? The exact, you know, X's and Y's and all that, but it would be very, very similar. Similar. It, it can't be any more difficult than that, all right? And it won't. All right, what about this one? It says find the degree of the polynomial. What are they talking about for the degree of the polynomial? The exponents, right. And how many, is this a monomial, binomial, or trinomial? What is this? It's a binomial, there's two. All right, so what you do is if there's more than just one term, if there's more than just one term, then you're gonna find the term with the highest power, right? So what power does this have right here? You don't just go to the highest power, which is four, you add them all together. So two and three is five and four is nine. So the degree of this term is nine, but what's the degree of this term right here? It's 12. So what's the degree of the polynomial? It's the 12, all right? You don't add them together. You take the highest degree of the, of whatever uh, term, whatever term it is. Whatever term has the highest degree, that's the degree of the entire polynomial. You do not add them together. Okay? Right. Yes? Yeah. If it was bigger than, thir than 12, then... No, no, no. Well, if these numbers added up to be more than 12, then it would be... Like, if these added up to 15, then the degree would be 15. Because these are greater than this. But this one term, even though it only has one term, the, the degree of that term is 12, the degree of this term is nine, 
so that you always take the highest degree of the terms. Make sense? I do. All right. I don't know exactly. I haven't even made the test up yet. Okay, I started, but I haven't gotten the whole test made up yet. But probably, my guess is it probably will be number two. All right, this says, Write the polynomials with the exponents on x. That's a key. I think, if I remember right, when we took the quiz, uh, some people just found the highest degree and went from there, but we're only looking at the x's. What does this term have? It's got a's and x's, right? I don't care about the a's. I don't care what the, what the degree of the a's are. I'm only looking at the x's to put it in descending order. Descending order means you're going from what? The highest to what? The lowest. So we're going from the highest degree of the x's. Remember, it's just the x's, all right, because of that thing right there. We're going from the highest degree to the lowest degree. So what's the uh, degree of the x on here? What's the exponent for it? That's 1. That's 3. That's 5. That's 2. Which one's going to go first? Which one's the highest one? Just of the x's. Just of the x's. The x to the fifth. This one right here. That's got x to the fifth, right? Right? Everybody see that? So that one's going to go first. So we write 7a cubed x to the fifth. All right, so we're done with that one. What's the next highest x power? The 3, the x cubed. That's right. So that's going to go next. Always take the sign before it. It's a minus, so you've got to put the minus here. So it's ax cubed. So we're done with that one. What other x? The x squared will go next, right? because that's the next highest one. And again, the sign in front of it is a minus, so put minus 5a cubed x squared. Even though we say find the exponents on x, we still include the a's. Everybody see that? We still include the whole entire term, but we're just putting in, in order of whatever the x's are. So it goes x to the fifth, x cubed, x squared, and there's only one more left. It's a positive, so we put plus a squared x. So that's your answer right there. Okay? Pretty easy. All right? So far, so good. Now, they're going to get harder. While I'm thinking about it, I was going to wait until the end to say this, but I'm going to say it now while I'm thinking about it. A lot of you guys were absent for at least three lessons, I think. All right? They're all on YouTube. Okay? You were supposed to be here. I had five, six people those three days that most of you guys were gone. And we taught a lesson. I didn't do it to be vindictive. I didn't do it, you know, to anything like that. I just said that I was going to teach every day. Those were days that you were supposed to be here. And so um, I did teach. And I gave homework assignments too. All right. So like five, let me see. Five. Every, let's see. Yeah, 5, 6, B is the only thing that I haven't collected yet, all right? So I've collected all the way up to 5, 6, A, all right? I gave you the uh, lesson plan thing. Caleb passed it out to everybody. Um, so I've done up to 5, 6, A. Uh, today, 5, 6, B is supposed to be due. So um, I will collect that from the ones who did it. And if um, you didn't do it, I will give you... Remember again, last week, I said that yesterday was the last day. Yesterday at 3 o'clock was the last day to collect any late homeworks. All right? It's all graded. It's all in RenWeb. It's all in my uh, book. But I will allow you to turn in anything from 5, 6. All right? So from 5, 6A, 5, 6B, I'll allow you to turn that in. But up to 5A, it was due yesterday. And if you didn't turn it in, you, you're going to get a zero on it. All right, so 5-6, though, I will allow you to turn in 5-6. Everybody understand that? Okay, so I'll, up to the day of the test, up till Thursday. Friday, not going to accept any homework, okay? No homework accepted on Friday. If you say I didn't say it, I'll come back to this video and show it to you, okay? Everybody got it? All right. Just want to be clear. I just want to make sure I'm clear so people don't say, oh, you said. Nope. Go look it up. It's on here. All right, let's do this one. Find the value of this expression. This is pretty easy. This is stuff that we've done before this chapter, so you should know how to do it. But I'm going to do it for you. Here we go. It's negative x cubed y. So I've got a negative out in front, 
Oops. Oh, there goes my dumb... Oh, you got to be kidding me. So it's, it's not writing like it should. Nope. All right, I'm going to keep recording, but i got to just restart this program. Oh, my goodness. So what are we on? Number five. All right, give me a sec. I don't know why it does this. I just don't know why, but it does. All right, let's bring this up. Hopefully it'll work. This happened the other day, and it, all I did was restart it, and it worked. Now i got to bring... Well, let's make sure I can write first. Let's do this. Let's do this. Technology. All right, it's working. Now let me bring that quiz back up. It's right here. Bring it there. All right, let me get it all centered. Sorry. There's that. And come on. There we go. All right. Well, that didn't take too long. Hopefully it works this time. Let's see. Yep. All right, there's the negative and then the X cubed. Here's how I do it. You can do it however you want, but this is how I do it. I put parentheses where I'm going to put in some numbers, but I put all my parentheses and exponents first, then I chuck in all the numbers, right? If you want to put them in one at a time, that's fine. No big deal. So I'm going to put a Y right there, and then minus, and this is an X that's going to be squared, and then I've got another Y, but that's being squared, so I put in parentheses. All right, so this first one is X, which is 2, right? Where did I get the 2? From right here. And the y is negative 3, so I put the negative 3 right there. This is an x, put a 2. This is y, put a negative 3. So that's how I start this thing off, right? Now I go through and just try to simplify it. So let's do this. This is 2 cubed, which is 8, and that's a negative, so that's a negative 8. I'll just do it one step at a time here, which... I could do that in my head, but I'm just going to write it down so you see what I'm doing. So this right here is negative 8 times negative 3. We'll do that in a minute. Then put a minus. Let's do this. This is 2 squared, which is a 4, and it's being multiplied by this. It's negative 3 squared. Is that a negative 9? It's a positive 9 because we're squaring the negative as well. The negative's inside the parentheses, so this is a positive 9. Again, you probably could have done that whole thing in your head if you wanted to, but I'm writing it all down so you can see. Negative 8 times negative 3 is positive 24 minus, what's that, 36. Whoops, make that look like a 3. 36. And if you do the subtraction, you get negative 12. And that's it. That's how you do it. Pretty basic, right? Yeah. All right. This one's pretty easy, too. Yeah, this whole quiz, I think, is pretty simple. When you start getting into the multiplication, and then especially when you start getting into the factoring, greatest common factor, we factored trinomials, we did difference of two squares, we did difference of two cubes, we did sum of two cubes. When you start getting into that, that definitely ramps up in difficulty level quite a bit. So that's why, that's we're going to go over a lot of that tomorrow. So that's why it's super important to be here tomorrow. I will record it, so if you don't show up, you can always watch it on YouTube. All right, here we go. Uh, simplify each expression. So we can only add what? We can only add what kind of terms? Like terms. All right, so we go through here. This is a, b to the fourth. That's a squared, b squared. There's an a, b to the fourth. So this one and this one I can add, and that's an a squared, b squared. So I'm going to add these two that I've circled, and all you got to do is just add the coefficients. Add the number that's out in front. That's the coefficient, and then you just tag the term along. It's very easy. So it's 3 minus 2. What's 3 minus 2? It's 1. And then what's the term associated with it? a, b to the fourth. You could put a 1 right here. You don't really need to. If you did, it wouldn't be wrong. But it's just waste. So I just put AB to the 4th. So I'm done with those two. Let's do these. These are like terms, A squared, B squared, both of those. So add the coefficients. Negative 4 plus 2. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. And then you just tag along the term. So it's A squared, whoops, A squared, B squared. There you go. And that's it. That's all you got to do. There's nothing you can do with that after that. So coming back to you, let's keep
keep going. We gotta add like terms here. But the problem is I can't just look at it right now and add the like terms. I gotta do something first. I gotta do something to that. Let's make let's enlarge it a little bit so you can see a little better. Okay? So I need to uh, multiply that out, square everything in there. So that's what I'm gonna do. So three squared is nine. Then x squared squared. What do I do with the exponents? I mult no no no. When I take an exponent to another power, I don't add them, I do what? I multiply them. Now, in this one particular case, adding them and multiplying, you get the same number. But technically, you are multiplying. Because if that was a three x cubed, that would be x to the six. That would definitely give you, it would definitely give you something different, okay? So you have to realize that when I take an exponent to another power, I multiply the exponents together. So that's gonna give me x to the fourth. And then what's this y gonna be? y squared, good. All right, so we're good with that. Now, take a look. Now I have all like terms, don't I? I got nine x to the fourth y squared plus two x to the fourth y squared minus one x to the fourth y squared. So I'm not gonna write all that down. I can do this in my head, can't you? Yeah, nine plus two is 11 minus one is 10. And then you write the term x to the fourth y squared. That's all there is to it. So you had to do one little extra thing to this before you added your like terms. Again, I haven't made up the test yet, but if I was gonna take from this quiz, I probably would pick this one, right? Because you have to do a little bit extra, all right? But I'll probably only give you one because I got a lot of other problems I gotta fit in there. So I can't give you like all 10 of these because there's no way I'm gonna take you know, all those sections. What would that be? That'd be three, four, five, six. Yeah, so four sections with just 10 problems. I'm not gonna do that. But I don't know, I could. It depends how I feel when I'm making up the test. I'll probably make the test today or tonight. All right, here we go, let's do this. Uh, perform each operation. This is basically what we did before, adding like terms. There's one thing on here we gotta do first before we look at it and start adding like terms. Do you see it? What's the one thing we have to do first before we start looking at them and seeing what are my like terms? I'm not really solving for anything. I'm not getting x by itself or anything like that. But what do I want to do? Look at it. Simplify what? So, Give me a word. Give me one math word. Distribute. distribute. Very good. That's the word. This is what you're going to distribute. Okay? So that's what I would do first. Okay? So you got to make everything in here negative or change the sign of everything in here. So let's write it down. I'll tell you what, this. I want to make this a little bit skinnier. There, that looks better. All right, I'm just going to write this down. Minus 3 plus 2x squared minus 3x minus 1. Now, I'm going to change this stuff. So I'm taking the, the opposite sign of everything in here. Everything in here is positive, so if I change the sign, everything's going to be what? Negative. So minus x squared minus x minus 7. That's my first step. It's very important. Now I can do basically what we did on the other problems. Okay, it's really no different. So let's find all the x squared. I got 3x squared. I'm not going to write them all down. I'm just going to add them up in my head. 3x squared plus 2, that's 5. Minus 1 is 4, so that's 4x squared. I like to mark them out when I'm done, so I don't like repeat them. You can leave if you want. If you're just going to mess around, feel free to leave. So here we go. I got a 4x. I got a minus 3x. So 4x minus 3x is 1x. Minus another 1x is what happens to those? No x. 0x. So I don't need to put anything there. So they basically, they, you could say they cancel out, but technically they add up to 0. And now we just have regular numbers. Let's add those together. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 7 is negative 11, so we put a minus there, 11, and that's all we do with it. All right, let's do this one. Same idea as the first step, but this one we just had to distribute a negative or a negative 1. This time we're distributing what? A negative 3. This one we're distributing as well, but we're distributing a positive 2. So let's write it down. Negative 6m, good, plus... 3m, or n, right? Very good. Plus 2m minus 
6n. Good. So that was our distributed property. Now we put them in order. It doesn't really matter what order you put them in. There's no descending order or anything for this stuff. Um, usually you would use alphabetical order, but it doesn't matter. So let's just use the first one. Negative 6m plus what? 2m, which is negative 4m. There's not that many there. 3n minus 6n is minus 3n. That's it. Easy as that. And we got one more on this quiz, and then we'll look at some of the homework problems for multiplication. I think multiplication was next, because we only had one quiz, and we're only going to have one test. Again, while I'm thinking about it, I've talked about this before, but I'm going to say it again. This test couldn't be any more important for many of you. All right, For some of you, you needed to get an A. You need to do well on this to get an A for the year. Okay, Some of you need it to just pass for the year. All right, this For some of you, this has a huge impact whether or not you pass this class. All right? And if you fail the class, you fail the class. All right? I'm not heartless. I, don't, I feel bad if you, don't feel, uh, if you don't pass the class. But if you don't pass, you don't pass. You're going to have to take summer school. Okay? Look, all three of my own kids took summer school. I had to pay for it. I drove them there. I had to pick them up. Okay? And that's a teacher. So all three of my kids actually had to take summer school. One took it, I don't know, it seemed like every year he was taking summer school. <laughs> all right? So look, it can happen. All right? I don't want it to happen to you, and you don't want it to happen, but it can happen. All right? My oldest had to take summer school just to pass the year. They let him graduate um, because we had already signed up for the summer school class, and he he didn't get his diploma, though, until after he passed that class. They let him walk, but barely. He barely was able to walk. All right? So I'm just saying, I'm not heartless. But look, I've had my own kids not, you know, almost not walk and um, had to take summer school. So if it happens, it happens. You know, I'm not going to do every. Anyway, you need to do what you need to do to pass this class. So here we go. Let's distribute again. So let's do this real quick. That's 10 a squared plus 20 a minus 10. Let's distribute the negative two. This is where it gets a little bit, a little bit um, sketchy because you got a lot of negatives. Some are positive, some are negative. You got to make sure you know what to do. This is not just a two, it's a negative two. So it's negative two times negative three, which is positive six a squared. And this is going to be a plus 2a, and this is going to be a minus 24, okay? Because I took that negative 2, and I distributed it. If this marker thing would work. There we go. I think I'm writing too fast for it. Right here, let's distribute a negative 2 just like we did here, all right? No different. So it's negative 2a squared minus 6a, and then it's plus, what happened to that? And then it's plus uh, 10. Now, we've done a bunch of these already just on this one quiz, so let's put them in order. I got some, I got some squareds in here. Let's do those first. So I got a 10a squared. So I got a 10 plus a 6 minus a 2. So 10 plus 6 is 16 minus 2 is 14a squared. This is definitely a place where I would mark these off so I don't repeat them. Let's do the a's. All right, I got 20 plus 2 is 22. Minus 6. What's 22 minus 6? Anybody know? It's 16. So it's plus 16a. It's positive. So I get rid of those. What else? We just got regular numbers now, don't we? So negative 10 minus 24 is negative 34. Negative 34 plus 10 is negative 24. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Make sense? All right, well, that's the quiz. We still have 15 minutes, so let's uh, take a look. That was 5.1 and 5.2, correct? So let me open the book to 5.3. I was in the middle of writing this stuff down in my free period last period, and then a lot of teachers started talking. And I was talking with them, and I didn't get a chance to really do what I wanted to. So I'm looking at 5.3, and again, I haven't made the test up yet, but... I'm looking at like 15 to 20 is pretty easy. I'll probably give you one that looks like this. So let's turn this 
into white again, make it a little easier to see on a black background. So I'm looking at, if you want to follow in the book, it's up to you, but I'll write it down. I'm looking at something like 17. Not saying exactly this problem is going to be on the quit or the test, but something like it would be on there. And this is multiplication. So it's 3 A B squared C. times 5ac squared, 5ac squared, good. I think I just have to write a little slower for it to work. Ah, crap, what happened? There we go, okay. All right, this is multiplication. There's no plus or minus sign in between the parentheses, so that definitely means multiplication. So we just multiply it through. Let's do the regular numbers first, okay, the integers, the, just the numbers without variables. So it's negative 3 times positive 5, which is negative 15. Now we multiply the a's together. This is a to the first times a to the first. What's a times a? a squared. What do you do with the exponents? Watch. a to the first times a to the first. What is the rule when you multiply and you got the same bases? What's the rule for the exponents? What do you do? You add them up. That's right. So this is a to the what? Second, 1 plus 1. But everybody in here should know what a times a is, right? It's a squared. All right, let's do the b's. Well, there's no b's over here, but that's okay. What am I going to do? Yeah, just write down b squared. Now let's multiply the c's. Again, that's c to the first. So it's c to the first times c squared. That's right. c to the first times c squared. Again, what do you do with the exponents? You add them, keep the base the same, add the exponents so it's c cubed. Now look. You should not have to do this stuff over here off to the side. I'm just doing it as a teaching method for you, okay, in case you forgot the rule. But you shouldn't have to do this. You should just be able to look at this and then write down the answer. Really, you know how I bug you about showing work sometimes? Really, there's no work to show, all right? You should just be able to do that in your head. Everybody with me on that? All right. So I could give you ones that may be a little bit more difficult. Um, let's do... Well, they got some distributive property on here, but we've already done distributive property. Let's do one that's distributive property, but it's got a bunch of exponents. So I'm looking at, I don't know, 36 looks pretty good. Again, I'm not sure which ones I'm going to put on the test, but I will tell you right now, I am putting questions on the test that are right from the homework. Okay, I'm not going to make them up myself. Okay, I'm too lazy to do that. I just look at the problems that you were supposed to do, and I'll put those on the test. All right, so I don't know if that helps or not. So I've got, what did I say, number 36. This is 3x squared yz. And uh, what else do I have? x squared minus 2y, x squared minus 2y uh, plus 3z squared. Whoops, come on. 3z squared. All right, there it is. I put 36 because that's the number it is on the book. It's section 5.3 if you want to look at it. All right, here we go. We got to distribute. So we've actually done everything we're going to do right on this problem. We've already done today. All right, it's just putting a couple things together that we've done already. So I'm going to take this and distribute it through the x squared. So I'm going to put 3. Come on. 3, and then x squared times x squared. We've already done that, right? It's x to the fourth. And then there's nothing else in that term to multiply by, so I just keep this, what? y, z. And then I put a minus. And then I multiply this by 2y. So 3 times 2 is 6. There's no x squared here, so I just write x squared. There is a y, so I go y times y, which is y squared. There's a z here, but there's not one here, so I just put a z. Easy enough, right? 3 times 3 is 9. And then this only has a z, so I'm going to keep the x squared the way it was. I'm going to keep the y the way it was. Now I can multiply the z's. z to the first times z squared is z cubed. Always look to see if you can add like terms. Look at it. Do I have any like terms here? Nope. So I just leave that as my answer. Just keep it like that, and you're good to go. All right, let's do another one. Let's do a FOIL method problem. 
I'll do a really easy one. This is 39. All right, I've got x plus 2 times x plus 3. All right, um, this is multiplication again, and it's still distributive property, but we call it FOIL method when you have a binomial times another binomial. All right, so I'm going to take the first one and multiply it by both of these, and I'm going to take the second one and multiply it by both of those. We call it FOIL because first, outside, inside, last. Let's just do it. Here we go. Let's multiply the first things together. X times X, which is X squared. Come on. Why is this going so slow? All right, and then plus 3x, plus 2x, that's the inside, and then plus 2 times 3, which is 6. We don't leave it like that. If you leave it like that, I'm going to mark it wrong because it needs to be simplified, which means you add like terms. Do I have any like terms? Yes, obviously I got those two as like terms, so it's plus 5x, plus 6. That's your answer. You'll definitely have something like that. Let's do another one. This is um, my guess is I'm probably not going to give you something that easy on the test. All right, I'll probably put like maybe a three out in front of this, a two out in front of this. It's still the same thing. It's still distributive property. It's still FOIL method, but I'll make it a little bit more challenging. Not much, but a little bit. Okay, that's way too easy. So let's do something like this. Let's do fifty nine. So it's 2a plus b, and then that's in parentheses. Then you have a squared on the outside. I'll show you the common mistake. I almost hate showing you a common mistake because that might be the thing that you actually remember, and then you do it that way. Um, I've had that happen before. But I think it's important to show the common mistake so you don't make the mistake. So don't make this mistake. Do not go 2a squared, which is 4a squared plus b squared. That is not your answer. It is not... So this is not 4a squared plus b squared. It is not. What do you do when you, mul when you square anything? If I take a 5 and I square it, what am I doing? I'm multiplying it by itself. It's the same thing that's true here. So I'm squaring everything in the parentheses. So I'm multiplying 2a plus b times itself. So you must write it out like this. Now maybe some of you could do this in your head. I would not suggest it at this point. I don't think we've done enough of these for you to really look at this and do this in your head. All right? Multiply it or show that it's being multiplied times itself. That is super important. Now what we're going to do is what we just did on the last problem. We're going to do some FOIL or distributive property. Let's multiply the first together. That gives us 4a squared. Let's do the outside together. That's 2ab. Let's do the inside. That's also the same exact thing, 2ab. And let's do the last. b times b is b squared. Don't leave it like that. If you do, it's wrong. Got to add like terms. And these two right here will always be like terms when you do something like this. Okay. And so you add them together. That's 4ab. And then there's no b squared, so you just write a b squared. That is your answer right there. So that's how you do that. So the key is this step right there, is to write them multiplied times it themselves. All right, this times itself. That's super important. All right, let's uh, see what else. Let's do one more. Yeah, we could probably do one more and we'll quit. All right. I'm looking at 74. I just saw it, just caught my eye. So we'll do that one. So this is x minus 3y. And uh, x squared plus 3xy. x squared plus 3xy plus 9y squared. All right. So here we go. We are going to uh, distribute, all right? And um, here we go. Let's take the x. I'm not going to draw the arrows here, all right? I think you already get that idea. So x times x squared, x cubed. x times 3xy, that's a plus 3 what? 
x squared y because it's x times x. And then plus, there's a 9. Yeah, and there's no x to multiply here by, so I just put x and then y squared. All right, so that's half of it. Now what I got to do is take this and distribute it. Remember, it's got a negative there. That minus is super important. So we're going to distribute that negative through everything here. So everything in here is going to be minus because it was plus. Now it's all going to be minus. So it's minus 3y times x squared. Now don't put y x squared. Put it in order, x squared y, because it's a lot easier to see if there's any other like terms. Okay, you see that, right? So make it x squared y because look, right here you see an x squared y. It just makes it easier. All right? Uh, that was the first one. Let's do the second one. So we've got minus 9, and then it's going to be x, and then it's going to be y squared right there. Then I take this times this. It's going to be a negative again. 3 times 9 is 27, and then y times y squared is y cubed. Don't leave it like this. It's going to be wrong if you leave it like this. So make sure you add some like terms. Let's see if you see any like terms, do you? Let's circle at least the first one. Do I have any x cubes? No, so I don't use that. I got an x squared y. Do I have an x squared y somewhere else? Yep, absolutely, right there. Okay, notice I circled the minus as well. But look what happens. That this is a real nice thing that happens. What happens? 3x squared y minus 3x squared y. What happens? They cancel each other out, okay? I should have put the x cubed first. I should have done that first, okay? So there's my x cubed. My x squared y's cancel out. Look what happens to my 9's. My 9x squared, or sorry, xy squared. This is an xy squared. Again, look, 9 minus 9 is 0, so they cancel out. And what are you left with? Minus 27y cubed. All right? Notice. Do you notice anything? Does that answer right there strike you as anything that you've seen before? It's a difference of what? 2 cubes. All right? So... Tomorrow, we're going to talk about the difference of two cubes. Tomorrow, I'm going to give you this, this answer, and you're going to have to come up to this, okay? You're going to have to factor it, and you're going to come up with this as an answer, all right? When I first saw that, I thought, well, that sure looks like a difference of two cubes, and sure enough, it is. So that's what we're going to do tomorrow. So that's all the time we got today. We did the first three. So the rest of the test is five what? Four, five, and six. Five, four, five, 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 six. If you haven't looked at the lessons on five, five, and five, six, most of you here were, for, were here for five, four. But many of you were gone for a lot of five, five, and five, six. So it's up to you. I did you a favor. I, um, I, caught, or I uh, recorded them. I got them up on YouTube. They're up right now. Everything is up right now on YouTube, okay, except for this review right here. But everything that I've taught, so it's your responsibility, all right? If you're going to miss class for whatever reason, then you're going to have to make it up. That's the way it works, okay? You're big boys and girls now, ready to go to college. Your professors, your teachers in college, you're not going to take it easy on you because you want to do a skip day or you want to do whatever, all right? What is this? Five, six, okay. Okay. Uh, I'm not taking 5-5. Five, five. I'm only taking 5-6. I'm only taking 5-6. So if you have anything less, lower than 5-6, I'm not taking it. I'm only taking 5-6. No, I said yesterday was the last day. All right? I'm only taking 5-6. I don't know. I just did a lot of